50 pound bag of corn. Hey guys, it's Harleywood. I'm gonna do some shooting today. Before I did though, I wanted to show you this belt. This is the emissary belt from Sigueta. Previously, it was Alonzo Defense. This belt was made in collaboration with Garand Thumb. He has some videos on it. It is the same belt, just they changed their name in January of this year, and it provides a rock solid platform, either for an EDC belt or for a dedicated gun belt or even inside of a battle belt setup. Now, I've reviewed several belts on the channel. I'm going to show you some of the pros and cons of those belts and how this one kind of addresses many of the cons of other belts that I've tried. Let's take a closer look. Eyes up here. If you don't care about all these other belts and you just want to skip ahead to see the emissary belt, I'll post a timestamp right here so you can skip ahead. The first belt that I reviewed on the channel was this G-Code belt. And it's okay. It's a good range belt. It's a fantastic battle belt, especially with the Cobra buckle there. So if you put it inside of a, like a padded battle belt or wear it straight up as your, as your battle setup, this is a good belt. It's not very rigid, okay? And for the price, I would expect just a little bit more. Now, most of the price is caught up in the Cobra buckle there. Let me tell you this. I have worked many, many years, and I have spent a lot of money and dedicated a lot of time to perfecting the tactical tummy. This does not work with the tactical tummy. Okay, if you have a couple extra pounds on the front here, it's gonna sit on top of this. And if you appendix carry, it's even worse. This is not a very comfortable setup. Also for appendix carry, I don't like that the trailing end folds over to the right side here, because for right-handed people, that's where your belt's gonna be. And it is super thick with three plies plus that inner liner of Velcro. The next one that I reviewed was this from Lunar Concepts. Now, this is an extremely rigid belt. There's no way I could bend this. It has an interesting buckle. So you see, oh, I'm trying to do this behind the camera. There you go, pulling the wrong way. It has these two pieces, and this one snaps and gets held magnetically locked in place. And when it has tension pulling out this way, there's no way to have that undone. So you have to push in and then undo it. This is a fairly comfortable belt. I will tell you that it has a lot of sharp corners. It just feels like it could have had a little bit pr better production quality on it. These sharp corners tend to cut on you. Again, you have this piece trailing off here and it uh, interferes with a appendix carry. This one's not quite as bad. It's fairly thin right in there. Um, right out here, it gets a little bit thicker. Not horrible, not quite as bad as the G-Code, but it is still a little bit more difficult to clip on a uh, appendix carry rig. And the one that I've worn probably the most over the past couple of years, this is from Stormrider gear. And I think this one's called the Overlord or the Warlord, I can't remember. This is a fantastically comfortable belt. I've had three of these, and I've actually had to send two of them back because over the years, I have worn the Velcro slap out of these things. Um, I'll tell you this. They're good for EDC. They are they're very rigid. They're much more rigid than the G-Code. Um, not quite as rigid as that Lunar Concepts one. The only problem is if you bend down or you squat or you're doing something labor intensive, you can pull that Velcro apart. Okay, and I've used these working around the property and how, I can't tell you how often I've bent down, picked up a log or something that I cut off to go to drag it and the Velcro just rips apart. So good belt, um, probably not the best, especially if you plan to use it for tactical applications. And for about the past nine months, I had been wearing these marsupial gear belts. All right, I dig the buckles on these. So you can see the buckle here and there's a loop there simply snap it in. Now, the belt has a little bit of elasticity to it, so what I generally do is adjust this so it's a little bit tighter than my waist, pull it around, stretch that elasticity, and snap it in. If you are a left-handed shooter and you attach an appendix uh, rig on this side, this belt's not gonna work for you. As soon as you draw, that clip's gonna pull your belt right apart, okay? So this is not good for a left-handed person. This belt is extremely comfortable, not very rigid, and again, probably not great if you're gonna put it through any sort of hard use. Which brings us to the Emissary Belt. Probably the best of all of the ones I've already shown you. It has a very sturdy buckle, not as uncomfortable as a Cobra buckle. It is double weave, scuba webbing. It is extremely rigid. I can't bend this thing in half if I want to. Let's do a real quick demonstration. Here's that marsupial gear belt. I'm gonna set it right here. Here is a tool kit with just several shotgun shells in there. There's probably, I don't know, 40 of them in there. We'll set that on there. All right, no problem. Now, this one is much heavier. Definitely can't do this one one-handed. We're gonna set that on there. Oh, <laughs> and it collapsed. All right, here is the emissary. Again, the shotgun shells. That full case. Throw it 
couple more boxes of shotgun shells up here. 10 millimeter. And a 50 pound bag of corn. <laughs> There's probably 20, 25 pounds just in that one. This has to be 75 pounds on top of that belt. The buckle and the hardware eyelets here are brass. Now, for most of us, we wouldn't care. We would say, well, why brass? If you watch Grand Thumb's video, he explains that for people who are doing work with compasses, if you have the compass down in your lap, a steel buckle, a metal buckle can interfere with the compass. So they made it out of brass to help alleviate that problem. It is a true one and a half inch belt with a two inch buckle. And the eyelets are exactly one inch apart. All right, so how have I used this? I've had this for five weeks now. I have worn it every single day. I have not gone back to any of my other belts. I have worn it to work. I've sat at a computer all day with this. I've worn it working around the property. In fact, this morning I was out there for four hours cutting and mowing and dragging and doing everything else. You're never gonna have this belt slip like some of those other ones I mentioned. This is extremely rigid and it's gonna hold up. And even with as much as I might sweat in the Georgia sun, that scuba webbing is never gonna deteriorate as a result of moisture. And as a gun belt, it is pretty fantastic. Again, there you can see how a one and three quarter inch clip works on the one and a half inch. Very easy to get on and off. All right, let's talk about the price. Currently, at the time of shooting this video, it's $65. Now, I mentioned some of those other belts, and some of them are very, very low end at $15 on sale. Some of them are $80, $85, and there are belts certainly way more expensive than that. This is kind of in the middle of the normal range of what you'd expect to pay. It kind of fits the bill for all of those use cases, okay? If you want to use it for work, if you want to use it for EDC, if you want to put it inside of a padded battle belt, if you want to run this as your battle belt, there's probably nothing you can't do with this. A work belt, like, doesn't matter. You have one belt to kind of rule them all, as opposed to multiple belts that you can see I have for different reasons and different use cases. So buy once, cry once. So that's it, guys. The Emissary from Sigetta. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to Grand Thumb's video. If you want to go check out what he did, uh, you can certainly go watch that video. $65, link in the description below. Thank you for watching, guys. If you like this video, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button below. Lots more videos to come, and we'll see you on the next one.